Hello people of the internet, welcome back. So uh, it's been a while, um, I've been really ill for about the past week so today's the first day I've kind of felt well enough to even like leave my room. I'm still actually quite ill but um, I can actually move now which is a plus. <laughs> um, um, so this video is going to be about my um, one year cochlear implant update because I've now actually had my cochlear implant for about a year. Um, so let's get right into it. So I am still seeing gradual improvements I think with my speech understanding. I think I'm seeing the improvements now more with like music and that sort of thing. I find that easier to interpret than I could before. Um, I'm also still learning how to use um, my assistive technology such as my cochlear mini mic and my Roger microphone as effectively as possible and learning what situations they help and what situations they don't and like how to use that to the best of its ability and just remembering that I have them and to use them which is often half the battle. It's just getting into the mindset of thinking instead of just thinking oh, I can't hear, so I'm just gonna struggle to hear. And um, think like, oh, is there a way I can actually make this easier for myself? Do I have a piece of technology I can use to make this better? And just getting into that mindset of remembering <laughs> that I have this stuff. Um, I have found, um, so I thought my cochlear implant was about as good as it could get. But then I found this thing online. It's called Meludia, and it's a website by Medel, and it's for increasing music appreciation for people with cochlear implants. And um, you don't have to have a Medel cochlear implant to use it. I mine is a cochlear branded um, implant, and um, it's very diff. It's actually quite hard. <laughs> so um, I would recommend that for people, not people who've just got an implant and are still working on understanding speech but people a bit further down the line that want the more kind of advanced rehabilitation things to help with music or um, just really getting it as good as it's going to be because um, I struggle with even some of the easiest levels on that so it is actually very hard so I would recommend that. Um, I should have another MAP appointment coming up soon so um, they might be able to make my program a bit better um, I haven't actually got the appointment for that yet. I don't know when that will be, but that should be coming up relatively soon. Um, I do still struggle to hear in background noise um, without assistive technology. Um, my cochlear mini microphone and my um, Phonak Roger on microphone help so much. With those, I don't struggle anywhere near as much. It makes it makes hearing in background noise like hearing without background noise. It makes that much of a difference. That might not make sense to people who don't have a hearing loss, but for people who use hearing aids and cochlear implants, it is a massive difference. Um, I find that I don't really need my other hearing aid. This, um, I, I can hear just as well when I just have my cochlear implant on, but I still use it because um, it, I've been told I'm supposed to, the only thing I do find my hearing aid makes a little bit of a difference with is music. If I'm streaming to both, um, my cochlear implant and my hearing aid, I do feel like it does sound a little bit louder and a bit kind of, you know, there's just something going on on the other side rather than it all being on one side. Um, but with speech, I don't think it makes speech any clearer, um, but I still use it. I have. Uh, one thing I have also noticed is um, the longer I've not had normal hearing, the more I have to concentrate on my speech to keep my speech sounding normal. <laughs> um, if I'm, you know, people have pointed out to me a couple of times when I've been tired or just not really concentrating on my speech that um, it's not, it's not like so unclear that people can't understand it, but it doesn't sound entirely typical. Um, it's just like I've got a bit lazy with my speech if, if I'm not 
concentrating whereas before it was completely natural and to speak the way I'm speaking now whereas now it's something I have to just remember that just because it sounds fine to me doesn't mean it sounds fine to everyone else so I just need to concentrate a bit on um, making sure that I am actually speaking clearly <laughs> um, but to be honest it doesn't really bother me that much um, it's just something I need to be a bit aware of um, especially when I'm talking with people who don't know me. Um, so that's the general update about my cochlear implant and how I'm getting on with that. Um, but I've got a few kind of like just updates and recommendations. If you would, if you just want to see about the cochlear implant stuff, that's all finished now. Um, updates. My Hearing Like Me video is out. So if you go to the Hearing Like Me YouTube channel, um, you can find a video of me. I'm also going to be making some more videos down there and um, we're thinking of maybe working on um, some basic British sign language videos but that's none of that's confirmed yet but you know if you want to see that uh, that's where it will be um, I recommend also the Medel Sound Sensations project um, if you just google Medel Sound Sensations um, if you just search that on Google you will find it and it's um, musicians and dancers and stuff from all different countries who have um, hearing implants um, performing music. I watched it, I thought it was quite good. Um, it's kind of a lot of shorter videos so you, it's not like one long thing. Um, you can watch like little videos and that's kind of interesting and you, you sort it kind of by country. Um, Meludia, I've mentioned, I recommend that for people who have had their cochlear implants for a while and want a bit more practice, you know, um, learning to hear music better, I would recommend that. Um, also, you, you don't have to have a specific brand of cochlear implant, I'm sure if you used hearing aids or a um, bone anchored hearing aid or anything, you might find that helpful. I mean, it's designed more for people with cochlear implants, but if you have something else, um, I mean, feel free to check it out. Um, you get a few goes free, and then you have to pay if you want the more advanced levels. So that's something to consider. Uh, music recommendations. Um, my favorite band ever. I don't think I've even mentioned them on here. They're called La Raiz, which means the root in Spanish. And they are a Spanish band, um, and I'd describe their music. I'd describe it as ska punk, but they might not consider it that. It's that sort of thing. Um, I really like them. All of their albums are brilliant. They've only got a few albums. They're not a very big band, but check them out if you like that sort of thing. Um, my final recommendation for things to read is this book. Oh, let me just check it's on camera. It's called Born in Blood and Fire, and it's um, about the history of Latin America, and it's by John Charles Chastine, and um, it's really interesting for anyone that's interested in Spanish and Latin American history. It's quite concise and to the point, and doesn't make anything overly complicated. Even in the beginning, there is literally like a, an overview, let me just find it. There is literally an overview of like a timeline and what was going on in different um, in different countries, and that um, helps make things. Because I'm studying um, Spanish and British Sign Language. Wow, this video is so dark. Let me brighten that up a bit. Is that, is that better? Um, so I've, I'm studying. Um, Spanish and British Sign Language so it's very helpful to have a kind of a quick reference for various historical events and things that have shaped Spanish history etc and Latin America this is about Latin America so yes thank you for what thank you for watching bye